The following video is intended for the adult collector and is not recommended for children under the age of 13. Parental discretion is advised. Hey guys, it's Rodimus Primal. I am back with another video. And today I will be reviewing the Siege War for Cybertron Trilogy's Spinister. Now, the reason why I am I also have these battle masters here, one is Singe and the other is Caliburst, is because Singe was one of his target master partners back in G1. The other one I decided to pick up was Caliburst, and the reason why is because the real Caliburst is going to make a little cameo appearance in this review. And so, as you can see here, he is purple just as um hair splitter was and there of course is the back of the packaging for him and you can see spinister as well on the back of the packaging of course you get some nice siege artwork and there's the artwork for spinister there now the one thing to take note about uh spinister's other Target master partner, uh, his name was Hair Splitter, and Hair Splitter actually was renamed Shroot for the Decepticon Phantom Strike Squadron, which was Skywarp, and you had to order him online. A lot of people could not get their hands on him because he sold out pretty quickly. Um, so I decided to use Caliburst as a fill-in. Well, I am going to take him out of the box and we're going to get this review started. So sit back, relax, make sure you're subscribed to the channel and let's transform and roll out. Okay, so here is Spinister out of the package in his full robot mode glory, and you can see how much detailing he has all over him. You can see some of the battle damage that they put uh, on his thighs, as well as it's kind of light. You kind of really can't see it, but you can kind of see some of the battle damage does show up there on the uh, forearms as well. It's not a lot, and it's enough that uh, some of the earlier Siege toys, I felt the battle damage was overdone, and here they're finally getting into the stride as far as battle damage is concerned when it comes down to Spinister himself. Now, if you're not familiar with the Spinister character, uh, he showed up in the later issues of the G1 Marvel comic. He was also prominent, apparently, in the, uh, the IDW comics. In uh, his actual G1 toy was a double target master, and the double target master allowed him to have uh, two guns that merge into one. Um, but here with the Siege toy line, they decided to make the toy show up um, just with his, you know, just with two handheld weapons that you can see here. The detailing on them is really nice. I like the fact that one of them is kind of a Gatling gun and the other one's kind of a laser blaster and he can hold them one in each arm. Like so. Or what I'm gonna do with his actual blaster here is that you can merge them just like the double target master could could make you know a single blaster for him to hold and that is how his original uh target master partners were able to be wielded in g1 now as far as posability is concerned he does have shoulder rotation all the way around uh if you're noticing that his uh, helicopter blades here stick up and it is because on the back of the toy they have part of the um transformation kind of keeps it's supposed to keep the helicopter blades in place but unfortunately the uh where it is they're still kind of loose so they can still turn but if you push it in farther you know far enough um it'll stay in place for the most part uh but it is still okay um his head articulation is not on a ball joint actually it's kind of like part of the transformation there allows him to uh, tilt his head up and down and the ball joint itself can let his head turn around 180 degrees he can bend, bend at the bicep as well as the elbow uh, and he does have bicep rotation it's not really bicep uh you know articulation there but it allows him to be able to to move there to to have um a good bend on his arm and he can move his wrists of course 
uh, all the way around. And he can do so on both arms. He does have waist rotation that can go 180 degrees. He can move his legs up and down. Uh, as well as rotate on the thighs. And he does have the ankle tilt, which everybody in Siege really seems to love. Uh, I do like the fact that he can, you know, get in dynamic poses because you do have ankle tilt. And it is part of the transformation as far as uh, his posability is concerned. And I really dig this toy. I think he's a fantastic looking uh, transformer. If anything, I say definitely get your hands on him. But now the big reason why uh, I showed you earlier the other target masters, or not really target masters, are called battle masters in Siege, uh, is because um, they decided to make his actual target master partners um, to be sold separately, which is understandable, I guess, because they're trying to, you know, hey, you want to you want to spend the money on it, you can you can get the uh, the target masters that you want out of it. So here is Spinister, and then here is Singe, and Singe is a recolor of Fire Drive, um, and was one of his original target master partners in G1, and as I stated earlier that um, if you wanted to get your hands on uh, Shroot or Hair Splitter, as he was called in G1, you had to get Sky Warp. And if you missed out on Sky Warp, uh, I decided to get the same mold of the toy, uh, but in purple and black, just like uh, he should be. Well, actually, I think the original was uh, was gray, but uh, this kind of fills in the, the gap there with, uh, with Calibers. And of course, both of them can turn into blasters for him to hold. But I wanted to bring in Takara Legends Caliburst uh, so you can see the differences between the two um, because at the end of the day, it's like I, I ended up getting Takara Legends Slug Slinger because he's my favorite of the uh, three uh, Triple Changers uh, introduced in 1987. And I will definitely say that Slug Slinger is definitely worth it, but getting Caliburst was the reason why I decided to get the Japanese version of uh, Slug Slinger instead of the US version, which does not come with Calibers. And then of course you have to buy Calibers separately. So that being said, we're going to transform Singe here. And the thing about Singe, you can actually take the blaster part here off of his back. And he does have ports there on the sides of his arm for him to be able to hold his blaster as does Calibers. But I'm not going to do that because it is uh, really a pain to try and get those uh, blasters back in place but um personally i just use these as they're meant to be and that is as target masters so transforming any of these target masters is pretty simple you can see how easy it is to transform him um i'm going to put that one in this arm now take caliburst and we're gonna do the same thing uh, you know, I'm actually just going to call him, no, I'm not going to even call him Calibers, I'm just going to call him Hair Splitter, uh, since I am using him as a fill-in, and we'll have Hair Splitter, uh, this actually be in the fill-in for him, especially because I'm using the Takara Legends Calibers as the real Calibers. Won't the real Calibers please stand up? And there he is with his dual target masters they also come with blast effects uh which uh if you are a fan of emgo uh he uses splooge i think is the terminology he uses it's not something i use myself personally but i think it is absolutely hysterical um his terminology um but it certainly certainly does look like splooge coming out of the blasters <laughs> you know since they are in different colors but here you can see the blast effects uh, for his dual target masters. You gotta admit, looks awesome. No matter what way you look at it, he can be, you know, turning around, blasting around, you know, Autobots any way, shape, or form that he can. And I, I absolutely love the fact that I was able to get two different uh, blasters for him to be able to use because, well, be a little bit more G1 accurate. But you can, you don't necessarily have to get the battle masters. Um, because he does come with his own guns, uh, it is a added effect for him. Now, since we are comparing him with other target masters, I'm going to compare him here with Slug Slinger again, holding Caliburst in his blaster mode, as well as Takara Legends Cup, which I uh, reviewed earlier. 
as well as Siege Crosshairs with Takara Legends Pinpointer uh, that came with Windblade, and I decided to give the uh, G1 Target Master his proper blaster, and I'm giving uh, Windblade a different weapon. All right, so to transform him, basically what we're going to do is we're going to fold up his arms like so. Then what we're gonna do is we're going to take this back piece off and with that separated, the entire assembly for the back of the helicopter comes over his head, which is kind of weird because you end up with this like cavity in his chest, but it's understandable because it's all part of the transformation itself and getting everything in place. Put the back of the helicopter in like so. And then, and then what we do is we move the waist up like so. And what that does is it flattens the back of the helicopter so that the piece can, con the two parts can kind of connect there. I'm gonna get the helicopter blade out of the way and actually have to move the, the arms out of the way during the transformation because it's kind of weird. This part right here of the transformation actually gave me uh, a little bit of Ajita the first time I, uh, you know, was transforming him because I didn't realize, you know, why he had two cockpits for legs and I wasn't, you know, exactly figuring out like where the parts went. But once you, you know, start transforming it, it does kind of make sense. It still is kind of weird because this part, back part of the helicopter um, folds in like so, and you need to like fold it in in such a way that it gets this back part underneath. And it is so weird, but once it actually does transform, you know, I mean, it actually does kind of like fill in, it fits in just fine. And then you do the same thing on this side, but you don't have to worry about the clearance underneath. So the back panel opens up, this folds out, the actual uh, ankle tilts out be to become a wing, and then it closes so that you have that closed out over here. And then this becomes like the wings of the helicopter on each side and you have to turn it. And if you transformed it incorrectly in mid transformation, you end up realizing like, oh, it should have gone that way. <laughs> <laughs> which it's all something like each time you transform it, you get better at it. Um, you know, one of the things that being a Transformers fan and, and uh, you know, messing around with them for so many years, you start to um, just start to assume certain things as you're transforming a particular Transformer, especially in the modern age where a lot of them transform same. Now, the rest of the helicopter here, the arms fold in, like so, and there are two tabs. Helicopter blades fold out, and there he is in helicopter mode. Of course, he has some uh, spinning action. And then, of course, to complete the transformation, uh, his two regular blasters fit underneath, and they fit a lot better than any of the Battle Masters do. They are supposed to fit in where, like, the back section here is pointed up. Like that, and there he is in helicopter mode, and he looks fantastic. I think that that he um, really um, is an amazing looking transformer. I am surprised that they have not decided to uh, recolor him as another character. I know a lot of G uh, our, uh, Unicron trilogy fans are waiting for him to be uh, recolored in. Uh, you know, let's say like Cyclonus, but in helicopter mode, he looks great. The only th the only um, complaint that maybe I might have would be that the fists are visible, but that kind of seems to be an issue with some many Transformers, but he's supposed to be a Cybertronian helicopter, so I guess we can say that he gets away with it. You could also, at the same time, uh, plug in his, um, the Battle Masters here at the bottom of the blasters, and end up with this heavy, heavy um, underneath section 
to be able to carry the two battle masters into battle as well as his regular blasters now if we're going to make some comparisons with some other toys uh here he is next to target master cup another target master partner there is uh crosshairs and my battle damage free springer which yeah i uh i painted up the uh the chest on him to remove the battle damage and i also painted the yellow uh as well as the green on the back and you can kind of see some of the silver there uh as you guys know i had already uh reviewed siege springer but afterwards i wanted to remove the battle damage and you can end up having the two of them have some aerial dog fights um in helicopter mode which is really great to have more than one helicopter throughout the line now transforming him back uh does take a little bit of work uh in the same way with the legs as uh before but of course we're going to remove his blasters we're going to unhook his arms so we can get them separated and then we are going to open up the panel here for one foot get the ankle out of the way unfold that leg close it we're going to put the foot back in place and then what we're going to do is we're going to do, open that up on the other side which again is really tricky uh to get that foot in place maybe there might be an easier way to do it that i'm not uh noticing in fact actually i'm starting to notice now that maybe getting this leg in and then tilting the entire assembly up might have been easier uh in the transformation things you learn as you transform a transformer for the first time we are of course going to tilt everything in place and move up I'm going to turn the waist around get his arms in place and if you've been following my channel for a long time you know i always form feet and legs then arms and torso uh, and then form the head. So the head comes last. That whole assembly flips out. And then we close the backpack up, lining up the little peg there in order to get the helicopter uh, blades in place. And there we have Spinister back in robot mode. And he is looking amazing. I will say. I am very impressed with this toy. I think that he, um, I definitely recommend picking him up. If you are not a fan, if you've never heard of Spinister before, uh, I hope this kind of changes your mind in whether or not to pick up this character. I definitely think he is well worth it. Um, but I wonder what you guys think. Uh, you know, of course, if you enjoyed this toy review, be sure to thumbs up and subscribe. Uh, leave your thoughts in the comment section below and check out my other videos as well. I've got more toy reviews, Transformers discussions, Transformers news, and everything coming down the pipeline. Also, check out my second channel of Rodimus Primal Talks, where I'll be ranting and talking about anything outside of the realm of Transformers that is related to geeky stuff. So stay tuned for all that. And as always, guys, until next time, till all are one.